Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. Today, we're doing something special. We're talking about the famous wash, clay, and seal. So to clean your vehicle, to decontaminate the vehicle, and also add a bit of protection, something very different, or you might have heard that. If you're a pro detailer, you're gonna wanna use it to be more efficient and gain potentially uh, some new leads with people who want that done on their vehicle. And if you're a DIYer and you don't have the time for a full detail, something very quick to do to enhance and protect your vehicle. And and to do so and to help me today i have my friend ivan lacroix how are you happy to be here sir absolutely nice to have you on the channel again ivan's been in the detailing game for over 40 years at this point uh, he's a half owner of diy detail with his partner nick mcgurk uh, and they uh, produce and distribute some awesome car detailing products we're going to use a lot of them today in this video by the way quick disclaimer this is not a sponsored video nobody paid for this video we're here to share those tips and tricks with you guys and by the way i'll leave the links to all the tools equipment and products in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. So as usual, all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So Ivan, the topic of today is we wanna show the viewers out there how to quickly wash, clay, and seal their vehicle. Exactly. What is that all about? And why would it be important for either a DIYer or perhaps a professional detailer out there? Well, first of all, it's a great way of maintaining your vehicle, whether it's ceramic coated or not. So if you have a ceramic coating, this is something you can do. If you don't have a ceramic coating, it's something you should do. Uh, basically you're removing the contamination that's embedded on the vehicle and that's brake dust, that's environmental fallout, that's all sorts of different things that accumulate on your vehicle and make it so that it feels like sandpaper. Absolutely. So we're wanting to eliminate that from your vehicle. The other thing, the seal part of it. So we're adding a sealant, we're adding a way of protecting the vehicle. Finally, efficiency. We're doing two or three operations in one and it's fun, it's easy to do, and as you mentioned, for the professional detailer, it's highly profitable because it's something customers actually want. And it's also, well, in time, not everybody has the time, the energy, uh, or the will to do a 10 to 15 hour detail like you often see on my channel. So I wanted to offer something different that's still gonna give you, well, 80 to 80 to 90% of the way there. So you're gonna have a perfectly clean vehicle, that's for sure, but at least you're gonna add some protection and you're gonna make the surface feel glass smooth because we're decontaminating it. What we're also gonna do today, two different methods. So a first method is gonna be with the rinseless wash method. So for those of you who might be apartment dwellers, condo dwellers, or live in cities with water bans, water restrictions, basically you don't have access perhaps to a garden hose or, or a pressure washer, we're gonna show you how to use that. And the second option is gonna be the traditional uh, car wash method with a shampoo, snow foam, the whole nine yards. So I'm gonna leave Ivan do the demo while I'm filming him. We're gonna start by showing what the two sections have for products. It is super simple. And again, links in the description to all that stuff. So Ivan, take it away. So the first one, we have the rinseless wash. With the rinseless wash, we have the wash sponge. We have an IK sprayer here, but you can use any type of sprayer you want. It doesn't have to be an IK, you can just use a push bottle for that matter, ceramic gloss to add the sealant component and also at the same time provide additional lubrication for the perforated synthetic decontamination towel. Now in these two setups there's two common denominators those are the perforated synthetic decontamination towel and the drying towel. And the decontamination towel, that one is a ultra fine grade, so it doesn't scratch or mar the surface while you're cleaning, right? Exactly. We're used to hearing the term clay, and we even call it a clay towel on our website. There's no clay involved. Clay is an abrasive. This is a perforated synthetic material that is extremely flexible, does the job. If you have heavy, heavy contamination, uh, if you have paint overspray, this probably isn't the tool for you. But for maintenance like this, this is a great tool to have. Fantastic. And then we move on. You're going to have the microfiber drying towel, obviously, to dry yeah. the vehicle. Exactly. And then for the second part with the traditional car wash method, what do we have? Well, we have incredible suds and a foam cannon, because if you're going to be using soap, you might as well have fun with your foam cannon. We're going to be adding one component to this, and that's the iron remover, because the iron remover must be rinsed off the surface. And the first one we're doing is a rinseless, so iron remover isn't really playing well with that. And finally, we're gonna be using quick beads instead of the ceramic gloss as the final sealant. And that is a spray on, rinse off paint sealant, right? Exactly. Fantastic. All right, so you're gonna show us how to mix all of that stuff. So let's jump right into the demo with the rinseless wash first. All right, Ivan, so now we are gonna mix up the uh, rinseless wash. In this case, it's the DIY detail rinseless wash. Right, so we have four gallons of water, which means four capfuls. Very easy way to measure. 
Those of us that are used to the metric system, it's four milliliters to a liter, and there's 15 milliliters in a capful. And it's basically half an ounce for every gallon of water. Exactly. That's the uh, one to 256 dilution ratio. Exactly. And that is it. Yeah, and just make sure it's... In the bucket, you have your uh, DIY Detail Legacy sponge that is specifically made for rinseless washes, but you can use to wash your vehicle as well, traditional way. Oh, definitely. And now for the pre-spray, we're gonna use the IK foamer All right. or the IK sprayer. And the easy way, you just dunk it in that same solution you just prepped. So there's no guesswork into how you're diluting it in the pump sprayer. No, and you don't wanna to put too much liquid in your pump sprayer, because the more liquid you have, the less airspace you have, the less airspace you have, the longer it's gonna take you to pump it up. And also you're gonna to have to pump it up a lot sooner. Perfect, so we're gonna do one half of the vehicle using the rinseless wash method. And how long do you think it should take for a, a small car like this on average to do the entire process? About 30 minutes. Okay, so it's super quick. Yeah. So you're using the pre-spray, so it means you're gonna pre-spray the rinseless solution on the surface first. Why do we do that? For lubrication, for safety as well. A lot of people have this misnomer that a rinseless wash means you're just taking your sponge, putting it on the surface, and off you go. That can scratch a vehicle. So we need to pre-spray. When we're pre-spraying, we're getting the lubrication happening, we're getting the emulsification and the separation of the dirt from the surface. And this car it might look semi-clean on camera, but it's been through a lot. Yes, uh, this car we pull behind our bus, uh, and so it gets a lot of abuse. Also, driving here today was in the pouring rain on the highway, so it has a bit of dirt on it. So they would start by, of course, cleaning the wheels and tires as they normally would. You can use your ATC if you want that or the rinseless wash, but we're gonna focus on the paintwork, obviously, to accelerate things a bit. Yeah, and this is a well-maintained vehicle. So the wheels, you don't really need to use an APC. The rinseless wash does a great job. So this car is ceramic coated, correct? Yes. Which uh, coating did you apply on it? This actually has a combination of coatings. So it has the uh, eight-year coating topped with the three-year coating. So both DIY detail coatings? Yeah. The whole goal of that was we had customers asking us if it could be done. So let's use our, our vehicle to experiment and get it done. So we're going to do one half with the rinse and wash method and the other half with the traditional method. So you guys can compare which one suits you best. And so... All of that rinseless wash on the surface now is starting to lift and encapsulate that loose dirt and debris and also again providing lubrication on the surface. Exactly. Next step, our wash sponge. So for all of those who are scared of a sponge, that's not your traditional sponge that you have in your kitchen, right? No, this is not a kitchen sponge. This is a sponge specifically engineered for this purpose. And I remember you saying when you're doing a rinseless wash, you're applying the rinseless solution on the surface, right? You're not applying any type of pressure. No, no pressure whatsoever on the wash sponge. So you see how quickly he's going through it already, guys, and you can flip the sponge to the other side. So both sides are identical, but they're color coded. So you know which side you've used and then you flip to the other clean side until it's saturated with the dirt. You simply dunk back in your solution and that releases all those particles, right Ivan? Exactly. So at the bottom of this bucket, guys, I don't know if you can tell on camera, there is a grit guard. So this here, yeah, you can see it there. That's a filtration system basically that's going to keep all that loose dirt in the bottom. So the rinseless wash releases all the dirt from the sponge and puts it beneath with gravity and encapsulation in the bottom there. So the rest of your solution is clean and good to go. And if uh, I remember correctly also, with the sponge, Ivan, you're not overloading it. You want it to the point it's on the verge of dripping, right? Exactly. So when you're dunking in, release a bit of that liquid and you want it on the point or on the verge. He's gonna show it here, what this means. It's just on the verge of dripping. It's just a bit of droplets there. there you go. And as I said, we pull the bus we pull the car behind the bus, so there's actually grease on the yes. front. So that's so. not dirt particles, but it's grease. Exactly. So I'll well, keep... good that we're washing the vehicle. Yeah. And the rinseless wash, you're going to leave on the surface 
for the uh, decontamination stage, right? Exactly. Now, if your vehicle was really covered in dirt, you would do a two-part wash, which means, like I'm doing here, you would wash with one side of the sponge and then go over that same area with the other side of the sponge. That's only if you have a heavy dirt accumulation. So, there's not scratching or marring the paint. We've covered that in another video that you guys can check out. Does a rinseless wash scratch the paint? They're made to not scratch the paint as long as you're using them correctly. If you're scratching the paint, it's user error, not the product's issue. So right. This wash is totally safe. As long as you're using common sense, if it's caked in a layer of mud, you're going to pre-rinse the vehicle first. Rinseless wash doesn't mean that you never rinse, right? Ivan, it means that you're just not rinsing at the end of the wash process. Exactly. So there we go. One half of the vehicle is all washed. That's done. So now we move on to the decon. And this is where it becomes fun for a couple of reasons. First of all, we're using ceramic gloss, smells great. But if you're doing this outside, we could actually do this panel by panel. And where you, when you're using this method, you actually want to dry the vehicle as you're going. So we're using the rinseless wash as our lubrication, but we're also using the ceramic gloss. So one spray of ceramic gloss on our towel, one on the panel, and where we sprayed is where we apply the towel. And then from there, so you're claying and you're sealing or protecting the surface at the same time. That's the advantage exactly. of this method, right? Yep. By the way, it smells so good, the uh, DIY Winston's wash. What does that smell like? It's a fruity smell, yeah. Fruity smell, yeah. So again, one here, one there, so match them up. Very, very little product. For those who think that you have to overspray and oversaturate each panel, no. less is more. Less is definitely better. And the towel has four sides, so. So you can clay the glass as well. All the exterior surfaces, basically it's gonna remove any of that embedded contamination. So it can be some paint overspray, some road debris, some grime, some dirt, uh, particles that have embedded themselves inside the, uh, the clear coat or even on the glass surfaces. If you look at glass through a microscope, they're porous and they can accumulate in those hills and valleys, all that dirt and grime. So once you're done cleaning the paint, you should feel it being glass smooth. Exactly, and it actually makes your glass cleaning a lot easier to do this. Absolutely. And doing it on the windshield, well, next time I drive through rain, I've got that great effect where I'm not worried about the, using the wipers too much. So it's gonna act as an additional lubrication on the surface as well. So the rinseless wash on its own is a perfect lubricant for towel drying, but by adding the ceramic gloss, you're not only adding protection, gloss and slickness, but you're also adding even more lubrication right for the towel drying. Exactly. And we can hear that decontamination towel <laughs> working well. And so this one will not mar the surface so you don't have to polish afterwards because again, there are no abrasives, right? In the synthetic clay media. Exactly. So clay, the traditional clay bar is definitely an abrasive. This has no abrasive. So just so let me... It's an ultra fine synthetic clay media and you can easily clay the surfaces without the worries of scratching or marring. I can hear it to pick up the contaminants. Yeah, and you can feel it through the towel as well. Yes. And I have no pressure whatsoever on the towel. And if you're adding a bit of pressure because you don't really uh, are, aren't that careful, the good thing about that one too, because it's microfiber back, all that rinseless solution that's in there is going to be injected as well on the surface for even more lubrication should you be applying too much force, right? Exactly. So it's a sort of a safety valve for it. Yes. But guys, again, like Ivan says, do not apply pressure. Fold it in fours and let the towel do its thing with just light agitation. That's all that's needed. Yeah, and if it feels like you're working, you're probably doing something wrong. There you go. So one spray, one spray on the surface. Where you apply the spray is where you drop the towel. And look how quick he's going through this. We're just a few minutes in, and the work is already pretty much done there. Is the other method, the traditional wash, uh, still uh, pretty quick? Still very quick. It's how a little. What would you say for that on a small vehicle like this? Uh, again, if you're doing the whole vehicle, maybe half hour, 45 minutes. When I had my shops, I had one employee that would do 20 cars like this a day, so. Yeah, you can go crank them out 
and this is a service that a lot of people are going to like because not everybody has the budget for a full polish or paint collection and a full ceramic coating application. No. For the customers who still want a glossy vehicle, a protected surface, a clean vehicle, and some light decontamination, this is where these services of wash, clay, and seal come in, right? Exactly. And once you've done this to the vehicle, it is protected. It's great for the vehicle. And even if your vehicle is ceramic coated, you want to do this to it. This is a great maintenance for a ceramic coating. So you can clay a coating as long as you're not using the traditional clay bar, which are abrasive. Right. With the clay towels, no problem, right? Yeah. Well, you can decontaminate a surface. Don't clay it. Yes. Clay, or a clay bar is a, a big no-no. Exactly. So now he's just using a uh, traditional microfiber drying towel. This one here is the Rag Company Gauntlet, one of my favorite microfiber drying towels. And so you're going over the vehicle in just a matter of minutes. Can people do this outside, by the way? If there's a bit of sunlight, of course, ideally we don't want to work in the direct sun, work in the shade on a cool surface right. or in a garage. But if they have to work outside, can they still do these methods? Yeah, definitely. I would just do it panel by panel. Okay. So the, you know, the soap and water wash, maybe not the best. For doing it this way because you're getting the whole car wet but for this one for the rinseless definitely you can do this outside and just after you do see some some spots with the rinseless they have to know that those are not the water spots they're polymer spots, right right so they can just be wiped off with a damp towel or the microfiber drying towel like they're doing now and they're done exactly so whether you're outside or inside this is a great service and already here, where the paint is dry, let me just, because this is the test, right? Oh my God. Yeah, look how slick this feels. You don't hear anything anymore. All that contamination is gone. It is super slick to the touch. And of course, you boosted, why not, the gloss and slickness while you're at it. And this vehicle, although it has seen better days, you can tell, look at that. It came out with a great. So that was pretty, pretty quick. That's just a few minutes. And of course, we just did half the vehicle, but multiply that by two. And like I've been said, in under half an hour for a small to average size car, perhaps 40 minute ish, if you have a larger SUV or mid sized kind of sedan there. And so that's all there is to it. Yeah, just. Uh... So again, we call, we used to call it wash, clay, and wax, but a lot of people have moved on from traditional carnauba waxes because they don't last that long. And now the uh, spray ceramic sealants like the ceramic gloss are uh, all it because you're going to get more durability, more performance, the hydrophobic properties out of it. So now if we want to show how simple and easy it is to uh, clean the wheels and tires using these uh, methods, Ivan, you want to do that? Yeah, so basically all we're doing is the rinseless wash on a dedicated wheel cleaning towel. Yeah, don't use the same media as you cleaned your paint with. You don't want to cross-contaminate. No. And... Just go around the wheel. If your wheels are well maintained, so in other words, every time you wash the car, you wash your wheels, you don't have to worry about a dedicated wheel cleaner and something very caustic or very aggressive. So maintenance should be pretty simple. So all you're doing is you're agitating the dirt, he's cleaning the, uh, the tire as well. Yep, and then just need to dry it off. Fantastic. All right, Ivan, so now let's move on to the traditional wash method. We're going to use a bit of shampoo and snow foam with the foam cannon. Right. What product are we using? So we'll be using Incredible Suds. I have half the foam cannon since we're only doing half the car. So 500 milliliters of water. Okay. Or around 16 ounces. Yep. And we'll just add roughly half an ounce. So that's all you need, yeah, because that, uh, that one foams a lot. It foams a lot, and the soap itself foams a lot as well. And this you can use in your wash bucket, which is what you're going to be doing. Right, so same deal. Portion of that. Half an ounce. Half an ounce. Two to four so gallons. Two to four gallons. Yeah. That's really, you're not using a lot. No, no. Less is more. All right. So you got your foam cannon ready to go. We're using the foam cannon as a pre-spray to encapsulate and remove a bit of the loose dirt and debris, and mainly for lubrication. Yep. We're going to rinse that off and re-foam to have all that lubrication going for the contact wash, right? Exactly. So incredible suds. I think the pH is roughly eight and a half. Exactly. It's close to neutral, but it will not harm the protection that's on the surface. No, correct. Won't harm the protection. It e won't even harm a wax. So but it's still ultra safe. Yeah, still extremely safe.
So this is the point where I would normally do the wheels. And while the foam is sitting there, it's breaking down the dirt on the vehicle. It is encapsulating the dirt and dragging it down. So we'll let it sit for a minute or two and we'll come back, rinse it off. So you're gonna foam the uh, solution up? Yep. Oh, it's nice to have that little explosion of absolutely, foam. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's been sitting on there for a little while. We see it dropping down, so we'll rinse it off. Okay. And I know it's very poor rinse technique because we already did the other half of the car. Yes. But nonetheless, now we've rinsed it off and now we do a second foaming. Why is that? The reason we do a second foaming is to be a little safer. Uh, we're putting foam back on the surface. So what we did with the first foaming is break down any loose grit and dirt on the vehicle. The second foaming is providing lubrication for the next step. Okay. So the wash step and the, the decontamination step. And now we find our wash media below the suds. That's only half an ounce. That is crazy. Yeah. And even the thick and rich foam on the surface, that's just half an ounce in the foam cannon. Yeah, less is more. That's why they call it incredible sun. Yeah. yeah, I think you guys had to redo the label, right? Initially it was saying like one or two ounces and you realized that it was too much. Exactly, yeah. So regardless of what wash media, you could have used the um, DIY Legacy sponge, the same as rinseless. Exactly. A wash pad or a microfiber wash mitt, whatever traditional wash media. As long as you're using safe washing and drying methods, guys, don't overthink the moment. It's more about the technique. As you can see, Ivan is working from top to bottom, as we normally do. The top portions of the vehicle are always the cleanest. And the lower portions you keep for last. You don't want to cross-contaminate. because Those are traditionally the dirtiest parts of the vehicle. Exactly. And the double foaming, what that does for you is, like I said, we took off the heavy grit. So now all we're having to deal with is traffic film. So in this case, there's no real need for the two bucket wash method. For those who are wondering, there's always the, uh, the big debate or conversation. Again, do what you guys feel is best for your wash regimen or what you feel comfortable with. But in this case, because of all that lubrication, and don't forget the pre-treat, that you did on the surface with the pre-rinse, with the foaming, all that stuff is to help. Always in an effort to have less chances of scratching or buying the surface as you're doing the contact thing, so the contact wash or the contact drawing with the drawing towel. Yeah, and once again, like anything else, I've got no pressure whatsoever on the wash media. I'm just letting it glide along the surface. Yes. So we all like a bit of foam porn, as I call it. Yeah. <laughs> I find it soothing. Look at all that it's dripping and it's sliding off and being evacuated. There's something calming about washing a car, regardless of which method you are choosing, guys. Enjoy the time. Have some fun out there. This is not meant to be serious. No. Your professional work, yes, absolutely. But have some fun while you're doing it. Put on some tunes, some songs. Enjoy yourself. The more fun you're having, the better the results are going to be. Am I right? Yeah. Spend some time with a good friend holding a camera. There we go. And now we're going to decontaminate it. But so you're leaving the suds on the surface again, right? We're leaving it there for additional lubrication and we're using the iron remover. Now the iron remover, a lot of people will just spray this all over the vehicle. Yes. That's a big waste of product. Yes, it's fun to see those red tracers going down, but it's a huge waste of product. An iron remover doesn't need that much on the surface. And the way we're going to be using it is one spray. If you that's open. one of the most expensive detailing chemicals as well, so we might as well save it. Exactly. One spray on the towel, one spray on the surface. Where we spray on the surface is where we deposit the towel. Exactly like you were lubing or clay lubing, the other side would be ceramic gloss. Exactly. One spray on the towel, one spray on the paint. You drop the towel on that spot where you sprayed and you start claying. But at the same time, in this case now, we're also removing iron particles that are embedded in the clear coat that mainly come from rail dust and brake dust, right? Exactly. So those are those orange rust spots that people see, especially on those lighter colored cars. All paints have them, but you see them clearly on the white paint because they're orange specks. They're basically those iron particles from the brake dust 
fat get embedded, they start rusting or oxidizing because they're in contact with water, with the oxygen, and you want to remove those if you don't want them to cause some permanent damage there on the clear coat. So uh, two things in this uh, instance were mechanically decontaminating using the perforated uh, synthetic decontamination towel. You're not marring the surface again because this is not abrasive with this clay towel. And you're also chemically decontaminating with the iron remover. So you're doing two actions at once. And Ivan, I think that if people just want to use any clay media with any iron remover as a clay lube, not all iron removers are made the same, right? No, not all are created equal. Okay. Uh, some of them contain solvents. And when they contain solvents, that's a great way of breaking down your clay media, whether it be a traditional clay bar or a synthetic decontamination towel. So in the case of the DIY detail iron remover, there's no solvents in there? Correct. There's even a bit of surfactants, I think, right? That help with lubrication? Exactly. So we designed it specifically to be used this way. And look how quickly Ivan's going around the vehicle, guys. So again, in a matter of what, 30, 40, 50 minutes tops on bigger vehicles, you guys did three actions once again. You cleaned the vehicle or washed it. You decontaminated the vehicle. And in this method, we're doing two forms of decontamination, mechanical and chemical. And you've also protected the surface. So either boosted the existing protection or added a bit of protection. It's going to last a few months. How long can um, the ceramic gloss last in the best of conditions? In the best of conditions, you can get up to a year. And what about the... Um, uh, quick beads, graphene base that we're going to be using on this slide? Exactly the same. Exactly the same. So in best of conditions, so many months or up to a year, of course. Durability for any protection, guys, depends on many factors. The prep, the application, the conditions your vehicle is exposed to, the weather, the mileage that you also do, and the maintenance of your vehicle. Yeah. Is it garage kept? Do you keep it outside? Exactly. Is it in the elements 24-7 or is it just a weekend driven vehicle? And using it this way, you'll use less than an ounce to decontaminate a whole car of iron remover. So you're using very, very little. And is it as efficient as somebody would if they were spraying the thing, like dousing the paint with the iron remover? Actually more efficient. Why is that? So iron remover, people think it breaks down iron. And it actually is a rust converter, would be a better term. Yes. So it's converting the rust. So what we're doing with this is we're removing the iron ball if I can put it that way, yep. that is stuck to the paint. And now we're letting this just work on the rust stain. Exactly. It's not having to work around that iron ball. It's not having to break anything down. So the iron particles, basically they have jagged edges. And where you're, when you're using the iron remover, you're accelerating the oxidation process and you're making those jagged edges more rounded and off. Hence, when you're rinsing the iron removers afterwards, it releases the iron particles. So you're not melting away the particles, you're just changing the shape of them to make them more soluble. Exactly. So there you go with the chemical and physical explanation. So what are the next steps now, Ivan? We rinse and then we seal using the quick beads. With an iron remover, very important to rinse thoroughly. Yes. If it dries on the surface, it's not gonna cause any damage whatsoever. But the next time it rains, you might see a red streak coming out, especially if you have a white car. Yes, so don't work in direct sunlight and do not let iron removers dry on the surface. No. Next, we apply the quick beads. So this, contrary to ceramic gloss, which is a spray and wipe, the quick beads is more of a spray and rinse type sealant, right? Exactly. So couple light sprays on the surface. We let it sit for 30 seconds or so. Okay. And you're spraying it directly on the wet surface. That's directly the on the wet surface. It's a water activated sealant. Yes. And then we spray from the bottom up. Why and is the, that? Because we're not trying to rinse it off. We're trying to distribute it. And this will distribute it. You see that foaming? Yes, the white part. You want to rinse until you have no more foaming. So we distribute, then we rinse off. For those of you that are in the luxury of having a beautiful shop like this, you're not in direct sunlight, there's a way of applying quick beads that's super efficient and super quick. And let me show you that. So I'm actually going to spray it over the whole side of the vehicle. 
And why is quick beads graphene based? Why did you add the graphene component in there? Water spot resistance. Uh, and we added the graphene basically because we could. It was logical to put it in here. Okay. It doesn't add significantly to the cost. And then you're getting the added benefit of reducing the chances of water spotting, not eliminating them 100%. Because that's, you can do that through tweaking and washing or using a DI system yeah. like I have here with zero minerals in the water. Oh. So now you sprayed that all over, it had time to dwell a bit on the surface. Yeah, and now we're going to rinse it off, but again from the bottom up. And I'm going to go in a 45 degree angle. That way I'm never rinsing it off, I'm just rinsing it forward. And we're done with the pressure wash. And that is it. So at this point now, you're just towel drying? Just towel drying. The ceramic gloss is its own drying lubricant. You mean quick beads? Or? Uh, yeah, quick beads, sorry. Okay. So quick beads, it's its own drying lubricant. So, so we don't... In case, even though you rinsed it off, you don't need to spray even more lubrication? No. And as you can see, just one pass with the towel and it's dry. Yes. So this is what a wash clay and uh, seal is, but done with the addition of the iron remover, and in this case, the traditional method with the shampoo, the snow foam, and you're saving so much product thanks to Ivan's tricks. I haven't seen that often done, and I actually learned that tip and trick from you, or the one spray on the uh, decon towel, and then one spray on the surface. And it also, I notice, usually iron removers, they smell like rotten eggs because of the TGA that's in there. It's not right. Because chemists don't want to deal with it. It's because it's the inherent nature of it. But I smell like pretty much nothing now in the garage. And usually, the garage is filled with the smell for at least a few hours afterwards. So that's the advantage because you're using a lot less, right? Right. So instead of using eight ounces of product, which is the average usage for a car if you're spraying it on, we used about half an ounce. So you're saving a lot of product. It's nuts. And you're getting, let's do the very important this test here. Wow. See, you're not even hearing my hand glide on there. This is super slick, super smooth. Just like on the other side, but a different application, right? Yeah, exactly. Ceramic gloss. What are the, other than the application method, what are the biggest differences between the ceramic gloss and the DIY quick beads? So quick beads uh, has the graphene component, which helps if you have water spot issues. The ceramic gloss, it can be applied with a polisher as well. So if you have a, a fine jeweling pad, spray a bit of the ceramic gloss on the pad, and apply to the vehicle with your polisher. So it's, it can be used in different ways. Okay, and do they produce like the same levels of slickness and gloss? Like why would one person pick one over the other if they're like wondering which one should I purchase for my, my needs? Uh, same slickness and gloss, same durability. The only advantage in slickness will come with the, uh, again, the ceramic gloss used with a polisher. Because then you're abrading the surface slightly, you're using the pad, the pad's actually gonna amp up the gloss and amp up the slickness. Okay. So two different products, two different application methods, but the outcome is going to be almost identical. You're boosting the protection, boosting the gloss a bit, adding a bit of that slickness. You're adding lubrication on the surface when you're drying your car. And at this point, I also notice on both sides, because you have such great hydrophobics, when you're using those two products, you can use what I prefer to dry the car, the 100% contactless method with a blow dryer, yes. a car dryer or a leaf blower. So the water just flies off because you're getting all those hydrophobic properties, right? All that water beating that you see here and the water sheeting, well, that's quick to evacuate with a blower. And that way you literally have zero chances of marring the surface because it's 100% contact free. So uh, if you haven't tried that using a blower, you're gonna see it in my videos. I highly recommend it if you have some form of paint protection because the paint does need to have either a wax sealant or a coating on it for the, uh, the blowers to work well, because if you have zero protection and they're just slow sheeting, it's actually counterproductive to use a blower on those cars. 
just use a microfiber drying towel. Exactly. And speaking of microfiber drying towel, this one's a little wet now. Yes, it's becoming heavy. Well, not only that, some guy hit it with a pressure washer, unfortunately. So. Yes, I noticed that. <laughs> that didn't help. So that is that pretty much it, Ivan? That's it. Guys, you saw how simple this was. And I mean, this car had all of that disgusting junk from it being towed behind Ivan's bus. Through all those miles, you guys do a lot of coverage and road and miles. And so diesel fuel, probably some fuel, some, some oil. Yeah, the engine has what's called a road tube. So uh, modern vehicles have exhaust gas for circulation, EGR systems, and PCV, so positive crankcase ventilation. The crankcase on diesel engines is literally a tube that goes from the valve cover down to the ground. Yes. So uh, when you're climbing hills, when you're using the jake brake, things like that, yeah, there's a bit of oil that gets by there. Absolutely. Yeah. And maybe a quick tip for the pro detailers that are watching. One question that I often get asked, Ivan, is what should I price the service at? I often reply that it's hard to determine because it depends on the location. So obviously a detailed job like this in Montreal won't be the same price in LA or Paris or New York, for example. Yeah. So look at what your, your neighboring competition offers or prices their things at. But how should one go ahead uh, or go about evaluating the pricing for their services? You want to calculate your hourly cost, first of all. So you want to know how much it actually costs you to operate your vehicle profitably in one hour. Then you can calculate your services. An example in my shop, this was a $99 service. It took my employee about 20 minutes to do a car. So we were actually making $300 an hour doing the service. Our neighboring shop, which was about half a kilometer up the street, he charged $99 for a wash clay and wax. It took him two hours to do the job. So we weren't charging by the hour, we were charging by the perceived value to the customer. Got it. So always include all your costs if you have employees, of course your utilities, the place you're renting perhaps, the rental costs. You have to factor a lot of things in before coming up with prices. And obviously if you want to stay competitive, you have to look at what your, your competition is offering to, to see if you're, in, if you're close or too far away. But you shouldn't worry too much either, right, of what others are charging. If you're no. doing a great job. Exactly. Charge what you need to charge. Exactly. Uh, at the uh, Porsche dealership, they don't go in a huddle when Kia puts the Forte on sale. They don't go, okay, what are we going to do? We can't sell 911s because they're having a sale on the Forte. Com two completely different things. Same as car washing, valeting, and detailing. Three completely separate industries. Yes. So figure it out. Do what needs to be done so you're profitable at the end of the day. That's what matters most. But of course, be proud of the work you put out. Use the quality products, use the quality tools, do a great job. And of course, by listening to the videos like this, it's free to you guys to watch. Well, you have all these tips and tricks. So by the way, I'll remind you all the links to the tools and products will be linked in the description under the video. Guys, go check out Ivan and his uh, partner, Nick McGurk, the DIY Detail YouTube channel for more tips and tricks like you've seen today. Give him a shout out from Pan, the organizer. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. In the meantime, guys, don't forget, keep it tight. Keep it clean and I'll see you on the next one.